So, a very warm welcome from my side. My name is Alexander Rabe. I'm the managing director of the ECO, the Association of the Internet Industry. It's my pleasure to welcome you here to this uh, lightning talk about needs of small, medium enterprises for the Internet of the future. With me here on the panel is Sabine Zimmermann. She is project manager there Initiative Digital and of German Mittelstand. I really have to translate all these uh, typical German sentences. Um, maybe we just stay like it is. Um, next to me, Judith Nink. She is head of advocacy of the IU. She will tell us later what exactly the company is doing. Please welcome with us Andreas Keck. He is deputy chair of Bundesvereinigung Liberaler Mittelstand. And last but not least, Dr. Bela Waldhauser. He is CEO of Telehaus and he is the spokesperson of our Allianz for Strengthening of Digital Infrastructures in Germany, the Allianz zur Stärkung digitaler Infrastrukturen in Deutschland. We have now a little introduction by me. We are the Association of the Internet Industry, meanwhile with over 1,100 members and nearly 25 years we are really trying to shape the frameworks for technology and for regulation in the Internet industry. We are also part of the whole industry and not just an association like all the others. We are, um, we are owning also the DKIX, this is the world biggest internet exchange point in Frankfurt. So we have quite some idea when we're talking about the internet and when we're talking about the exchange of data, what it means for the whole industry and the complexity of uh, managing multi-stakeholder dialogues in this area. So I guess we don't need much more words. So I will hand over now to the first lightning talk to Andreas Keck in his position as a vice chair of Bundesvereinigung Liberaler Mittelstand. Andreas, bitte. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I need some words too uh, to handle this uh, issue. Uh, so a very warm welcome from my side uh, too. Uh, does everybody know what Mittelstand means here in this room? Not really. So we call this Mittelstand is a, uh, is a German word for small and medium uh, sized enterprises. And uh, this is a, a phenomenon here in Germany. Uh, most of the business in Germany is made out of small and medium enterprise companies, not by the big companies. All, uh, so uh, therefore, it's um, yeah, heavy to know, or we have to know this. Um, um, and what do these companies need uh, to be successful? This is the question I try to answer. And we answered this uh, question a few weeks ago uh, with a Bundesdelegierten conference. We had a conference of all our members in Erfurt, and we discussed some um, points and uh, made a paper out of this. And I give you a few uh, bullet points out of this paper to get an idea uh, what we are uh, 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 what, what we are trying to realize. So uh, the headline is opportunity, opportunities instead of stand still. Uh, we need some. We need more small and medium enterprise there, because successful companies continue to develop. A standstill, which is maintained regularly, leads to the regression, existential, 
existential fears and pessimism. And this is the turn actually endangers prosperity and living standards in a global competition. Suppose promises of salvation, such, such as isolation and protectionism, reinforce negative effects. And if I tell you this, I have some big guys like uh, Donald Trump in mind or other guys in the world who uh, go for protectionism, which is not good for the economy all over the world. Against this backdrop, the liberal Mittelstand, the liberal Mittelstand wants, to forward, wants a forward-looking economy policy, which uh, we, has, we has especially developed perspective for small and medium-sized companies. Uh, we need uh, regularies for the owned and managed, uh, as also known as Mittelstand, because a strong Mittelstand is a guarantor for prosperity in the broad society. The, the liberale Mittelstand therefore heavily demands on comprehensive change in the mindset of politics at all levels. So we want the creation of op opportunities, the creation of op opportunities to be given higher priority and not the minimization of risks. And we see in the main politics the minimization of risks on a higher level than to get or to develop changes uh, to develop uh, chances and opportunities. Uh, we want the courage to change, to agility, and to trial error to be valued more highly in the politics. And we want a policy for future generations, not for the actual one. Also not for us, but for the next, oh sorry, but not for me, but uh, the next generation. And um, so what uh, are the main points? We, get, we did. It's the budget policy. Um, we need investments up and consumption down. In Germany have too much uh, or too less in, in investments, especially in the uh, infrastructure, but also in a different point in education, research, and digitalization. Um, we need the tax laws um, that favor uh, investment. Um, we have a problem with venture capital here in Germany, and what we need is a, 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 yeah, more venture capital, more courage for risks. We need to make our government actions more efficient. efficient. Um, we need this efficiency, and therefore we, we need more e-government and less bureaucracy. Uh, we want more AI than more personal personnel in our authorities. On the educational side, uh, we need more optimists and fewer doubters. We need more creativity and more unconventional thinks, thinkers. We need more flexibility and more desire for entrepreneurship. Yeah. And another point we have to face in Germany is uh, talent before origin. In school, training and work. The performance principle must urgently count more than the parents' purse. Our system must recognize and promote talents and giftedness. The highly gifted must be given their opportunities and their challenges, just as the less gifted must be given their opportunities and their challenges. We have to simplify startup and takeovers. Every foundation that fails because of too much bureaucracy is too much. Every company that leaves the market because it cannot find a successor as well. Entrepreneurs usually carry high risks that deter potential founders as well as deterrent bureaucracy. Next point is the labor laws. Uh, we need more or different forms of uh, social protection. Um, this is especially a German uh, topic, I would guess. Um, we need a modern and sustainable social security concept that matches to an agile working environment and promotes independent, independent self-employment ships rather than preventing it. Next point, research. We need more courage in controversial technologies, attractive conditions and attractive conditions for scientists. To win the brain race, we Germans have to uh, go for world's best environment for scientists, which, we, which from my point of view, we don't have, 
And we should need not be afraid of genetic research or artificial intelligence. So the next point, I think you will like it, uh, is uh, we have to, uh, driving forward ecological and digital transformation with, the commit with a strong commitment. We need a sustainable environment and a climate-friendly economy is not, oh sorry, a sustainable environmentally and climate-friendly economy is not only an important moment for the global climate, also such, but also offers enormous potentials for our medium-sized businesses, mm -hmm. as called Mittelstand. A leading position in digitization opens us opportunities for economy and ecology. And the last point is experts and immigration. At the same time, we need more training for all skilled workers, a better work-life balance, and a more flexible pension system, especially in Germany. And Germany at all needs a modern immigration laws, or at least modern immigration laws, to convince and inspire the brightest heads. So this is, these are my points, and I think uh, we have to discuss some of them, maybe. Thank you very much. That was already really a broad approach and a lot of topics uh, we need to discuss afterwards. Um, next on the stage is Sabine Zimmermann as a project manager of Initiative Digital und Vorstand German Mittelstand. She will hold now a little PowerPoint presentation. Can, yeah, wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> the microphone is on. So um, a warm welcome from my side. And I like to make some, um, yeah, so to share some thoughts with you about the relevance of the internet and um, also, the, Andreas has mentioned it, Mittelstand, point of view, and the statues where we are. And so it's better. Und wie komme ich dahin? Nochmal klick wahrscheinlich. Thank you. Well prepared, Lars Steffen. <laughs> So, um, as I said, a major part of the economy and community of the society worldwide is the Internet. Um, I will not go through the agenda because you will see the different points next. The digital infrastructure is the base for any digitization. It's not possible without transferring data, data analytics, and looking backwards, the whole communication is major part of the communication is transported via the internet. This is a nice picture what I like because it shows that the digitization is ubiquitous. It touches each country in a different manner and outreach. The data traffic is globally and Alexander has mentioned the DKIX, the Internet exchange, <laughs> welcome <laughs> to Alexander Zuma. <laughs> right time. He's the CEO of DKIX and uh, ECO, sorry, ECO. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> DKIX, run by the ECO. And um, the traffic is, is globally generated and transported over many, many countries. And um, coming to the DKIX, some figures. Who of you is aware of the DKIX, the Internet Exchange? Except Eco. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, it should. It's good. So we have 48 plus, more than 48 terabyte data volume. That's a huge amount. What is uh, generated and transported via these Internet exchanges? And this, what I mentioned, this number is DKIX with a main hub in Frankfurt and 32 sites meanwhile worldwide. And I have mentioned interconnections as a global, yeah, the, to connect networks all over the world, the carriers do interconnection. And DKIX has 190,000 active interconnections at all sites accumulated. So, DAISY is the Digital Economic Society Index 
which the European Union has created. And in light blue, you see the parts for connectivity. It's not a new fact, but still uh, something that we should um, think about. And as Andreas has mentioned, or the ECO is driving forward um, extension of networks. We need more capacity, not only in Germany, but position 12 is really not sexy. But we're working on it. That means also, if we're talking about the internet, that 5G with high bandwidth on mobile communication will evolve with networks and for sure data centers and dark fiber will play an important role in this 5G networks. And um, there is an interesting fact regarding the dark fiber deployment Uh, the point of motivation, because um, if we're thinking about Barack Obama, it was a yes, we can. Regarding Mittelstand, there is a huge part still thinking, hopefully I can avoid it, or I'm doing it later, or uh, driven, I don't know how to do it, and other restrictions, mindset, and um, they're not really aware, as uh, part of the team from the Initiative Digital, we are reali realizing this any time when we have our attendees and we are presenting solutions. And after these events, they are saying, oh, it was very interesting, but to motivate them, to encourage them to do the digitization in small steps, that's a major ambassador function, what we are doing here. So, um, representative facts from many institutions. I need the numbers. Fifty percent have uh, fifty two percent see as a barrier the complexity and um, yeah, the complexity how to handle it and also the speed of technical development and um, what we can also see um, the last point to finance such projects is not very easy but in in reality it is relatively easy but the knowledge about these opportunities has to be communicated and um, 35%, for instance, uncertainty about the success rate. So um, the culture from what we can learning from startups and, and the Silicon Valley to that failure is normal has to, to be adapted more and more in the company leading management. And so um, I think a lot of you can understand German, I didn't translate the slide. This is an interesting actual study from the Bertelsmann Stiftung. And they have uh, asked a thousand companies with different questions to get an understanding while the digitization is um, not really efficient moving forward. Ongoing shorter innovation cycles. Yes, that's a reason to do it to be one of the early adapters and not late followers. Breakthrough of inventions are coming from the US, from China. Artificial intelligence, unfortunately, is one example. They are very, very aggressive. The Expertenkommission Forschung und Innovation, EFI, has stated that since 1999, the product and process innovation rate falls down from 56 to 36 percent. That's really um, not a good development, for sure not for Germany. Six percent are technology leaders. There are some, and uh, not only hidden champions, sometimes mid-sized companies, the large DAX 
companies. So um, there are technology leaders in Germany, or between these thousand representative companies. But there is a lower number, 40 or a high number, 46 percent. The last point, having rare or non-innovation results yet. So um, there we really have to work on. And to work on uh, this also means trust, trust in networks, trust in the internet. And governance is a typical function that the ECO is fulfilling since many, many years. And I like to um, shortly strive three initiatives. One is um, digital, or I have to show you this one. This is an example, digital ethic from the ECO event uh, organization. And they are taking care of this topic for me years. The next presentation will be done by Dr. Bela Waldhauser about the Allianz zur Stärkung digitaler Infrastrukturen. The aim is to get visibility and um, yeah, to strengthen the position of in digital infrastructure in Germany. The project Gaia-X can be a part <laughs> of our later discussion. It's an actual one. The uh, target is to create a European-based cloud with a hyperscaler and for sure data security is a relevant point. Carta der Digitalen Vernetzung is an organization from the industry and there are companies listed who have a common understanding of values and trust and um, it's, it's like a, how to say, Siegel being a part of this organization and coming to the main topics of the Internet Governance Forum this year, data governance, security and safety. What will be for sure data security a part of Bela's presentation? Participation is important and the Internet is definitely a part of our common future. And so um, it's interesting impression and moment being here seeing so many nations this morning I at a breakfast I had a conversation with two attendees from Africa and I remembered my time 2012 I had a customer in Nigeria and at that time it took us three to four days to transfer a huge file with a 3d model of low-cost housing because the internet broke down and they told me today and that's really hard that um, the government has, let me do the date, has shut down the internet for three months and as long as such hard measures are, um, they are not allowed but are possible, the aim to find a common vision is really ambitious but I think um, talking to each other is the best way and exchange about the internet and this vision. Thank you for your attendance. Thank you very much. And as you already mentioned, uh, Bela Waldhauser is now the one who is enabling and who is motivating and who is part of the industry of digital infrastructure. And last but not least, he is uh, the spokesman of our alliance. And I'm pretty happy to announce now your enlightened talk to this topic. Thank you, Bela. Thank you, Alex. Um, warm welcome from my side as well. Um, as already mentioned several times, I'm the spokesman of the Alliance to strengthen the digital infrastructure in Germany, but I think it's not true only for Germany. I think it's true for a lot of countries worldwide, because we believe that uh, most decision makers in politics and industry are not aware of the importance of digital infrastructure for the country, for the companies, whether they are small, medium or big companies, doesn't matter. So, um, and that's exactly our goal, our target, uh, make the decision makers aware of the importance because without digital infrastructure, digitalization will not work. And please tell me one single industry which uh, will not need uh, digitalization to be successful in the coming years and decades. 
So that's really our aim, to put it in a nutshell. And uh, I think uh, I will close my uh, very uh, short talk because we will have a, a discussion now and then we can mention more topics uh, which are part of that uh, alliance. Thank you. That's maybe a good introduction uh, for you, Judith, to have uh, a little bit more perspective on the topic, because actually I think you have uh, two perspectives on it. Uh, first of all, you're one of the medium-sized companies, and part of this is what we are talking about. And on the other hand, you have customers who have uh, probably a um, very strong need uh, for secure technologies and what is your impression um, what was missing in the in the lightning talks or what is a new perspective we should address now yeah thank you very much um, so so first of all um, a lot of things um, I'm very happy that they have been already addressed in particular by you um, uh, Andreas um, when it comes to immigration and stuff like that maybe we can talk about that later but um, one topic was indeed missing, and um, that is kind of a German tendency um, of regulating everything and not giving companies the freedom to try their business models. And um, that is, for us, a big challenge, as you may imagine. So maybe I should start with the offer you had uh, earlier. Um, I would like to introduce our company. Um, so the IOGMBH um, is a company which provides software services for a fair and sustainable uh, web. So um, as but not limited to, we are providing an ad blocker. Um, uh, you may know Adblock Plus as a software. Um, so as you said, Alexander, um, it's perfectly right. We are providing tools uh, for users of the internet. And in addition, of course, we need really um, skilled people um, who are developing such software solutions. That's why we are hiring worldwide and also in particular in Germany hiring from the countryside and allowing our employees um, to work remotely uh, by doing mobile office. And that brings me back to um, Andrea's initial point of we really need bandwidth. So without a good digital infrastructure, it's nearly impossible um, to follow our offer of how to work for IO as a company. Um, yeah, that is one of our main challenges. Bella, you were just uh, pretty fast in your introduction. What would you say as someone who is offering digital infrastructure to the market and to companies, are you in a position here in Germany which uh, makes you comfortable for the future? Half, half, to be honest. Uh, first of all, let me explain what we understand um, um, with uh, digital infrastructure. Digital infrastructure is uh, broadband. Um, and um, that's mobile and landline, both. And if I'm talking about landline, it's fiber. And especially in Germany, we are far behind with fiber to the home, fiber to the building. We are second last in the European Union, which is a shame for a country like Germany. So this is something we need to change as soon as possible. And um, if we are talking about mobile broadband, we don't need 5G for every application. But uh, we have a lot of places uh, where even 4G LTE is not uh, properly available. So this is something we need um, to cover. Um, we have a very good internet exchange, as already mentioned several times, with DKIX, world largest. And last but not least, part of digital infrastructure are data centers. And um, because I'm heading a data center company, um, my, my major problem uh, are, are twofold. One is that it's very difficult to get building permission. And um, as Judith said, uh, everything is regulated in Germany. So it takes um, um, kind of nine months to get building permission. In this uh, period, uh, uh, you can build a, a whole data center in other countries. And uh, another topic are the very high uh, power costs in Germany which is um, uh, four times as uh, high uh, compared to, for example, Scandinavia, which means a lot of uh, data centers are uh, going to Scandinavia simply because of cost reasons. So these are the main topics where I'm not happy at all in Germany. Andreas, Bela, what is, what is important about having uh, data centers in Germany? Doesn't it make any difference where the data center is uh, placed? 
Yes, it makes because many many owner of the companies like to have their data in their surrounding, not anywhere in the cloud. So they want to know where their servers are located, and therefore they like to have not all, not, not all but many of them, all, especially the small ones, like to have their data, their their uh, um, uh, com their computers in in a in a local data center. Therefore, we should have more localized or local data centers. So um, the companies are looking for a partner of trust. Is it what you also have experienced, Bela? I mean, the, the headlines for this IGF is uh, data protection, safety, security. And if we are talking about data protection, safety, and security, uh, it's much easier if you have the data centers in your own country, whether that's Germany or any, any other country. Other applications, for example, are um, highly dependent on, on latency, which means you need to have the data centers nearby. Otherwise, that application will not work. If we are, for example, talking about smart city, um, uh, connected cars, autonomous driving, you do need edge data centers, you do need the broadband, you do need 5G, and only with that combination that works. If one single part is missing, you can forget it. Yes. Sabine, what, what is your experience um, in, in the local and the regional context? Is uh, the, the, the need for data centers uh, nearby already uh, in, in the heads of the decision makers? Not, not really near, nearby. Um, the, some of them are still in the face to consider that their applications and data can be placed in a cloud. And what Bela has mentioned, um, in the best case, in a cloud where the data is in Germany. And um, the, we had some, um, we have bone, both joined, Andreas and myself, a meeting with uh, 15 majors, and we presented the idea of edge data centers in their areas. And um, there was response zero. So um, I think uh, it's a little bit too early. And the, the question is, um, is the infrastructure driving the demand or the other way around? And that's what we have to solve. That would it help to place, implement a data center and then convincing the companies in an area of several kilometers around to, to use it? That's difficult from the investor's perspective. They like to have the business case and an idea about the ROI. And um, for the, the companies, there are some who are st still using data centers for IT outsourcing or cloud applications. And I see a future for platform business solutions to create new digital business models. And therefore, it makes definitely sense what also Andreas has mentioned to uh, have a larger amount of data centers, especially placed in the NECLEC regions, regarding latency. Uh, may, may I just step in, if you, if you don't mind? Um, I, I think um, w we have a tendency that data will be put into the cloud. Mm -hmm. But there is, especially for small and medium enterprises, which is a topic of our discussion, there is a kind of uncertainty. What is cloud? Where is cloud? Where are the servers? Where is my data? So it, it helps for the decision makers in small and medium enterprises if they know that the cloud, uh, their data will be in Germany, whether it's nearby or not, but it's a German solution. And I think that's similar to other countries as well. Not all countries, because Germans are very safety oriented. Other uh, cultures are not. But uh, in, in, in countries like Germany, it helps, helps that these small and medium enterprises are moving into the cloud, and, uh, which is part of the digitalization. So you cannot avoid that. Okay. Uh, we've got another small problem. Uh, it's uh, for most of our small and medium sized enterprises, business is ru running really good, r really good. And so they don't have really a problem. And for most of them, is digitization not the main topic they, they, they focused on? And this is part of the problem. 
because they because they don't focus digitization they don't ask for infrastructure they don't uh, act to uh, to be to become uh, digital fit and so for future fit and uh, i think we should we should aim this uh, Two and uh, and therefore it's good to have a, a, a initi initiative like the Initiative Digital from Sabine uh, to to go for it and to uh, to open the minds for this uh, for this uh, for for digitalization and the globalization. Uh, I fully support what you've just said, Andreas. I think uh, it's not only small and medium enterprises, but all, also the corporates. We are yeah. uh, simply spoiled because we have been successful in Germany for many many years. And uh, the problem is that we have had globalization for many decades. Now we have digitalization. But the speed of globalization which is, is not the same like digitalization. And if we miss one disruptive change, and we have seen that so many times now, then a, a whole industry could be out from nearly from one day to the other. And that's exactly uh, uh, the point. Um, we have been too successful in Germany, and this might be a problem in the near future. We had some big company, uh, companies here or enterprises in Germany. You, you, who knows Otto? On who knows Quelle? Ah, do you know wh 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 who's doing the business of Quelle in, in the, these days? It's Amazon. And <coughs> Quelle was a company from uh, south of Germany, uh, Nuremberg. They were very big at former times, and very well known. Judith, once again, maybe, um, that means uh, we don't need any digitalization. Is that uh, what, what you also uh, experience on the market when, when you offer your products? Or is there maybe, uh, are there other reasons why we have this uh, uh, lag in Germany in, in uh, getting fast soon? Well, um kind of a challenging question for a company who is totally digitalized. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, um, so for us, it's more like it's not enough. Um, it's not that we don't want to get digitalized, it's, it's just not enough. And um, maybe I can get back first to Bela, what he said at the beginning regarding fiber. I would like uh, to introduce an example. Um, we just recently uh, had uh, where an employee moved to Berlin, Friedrichshain. And he was offered to get a bandwidth of five megabyte. That's ridiculous. That's really ridiculous. And we are talking about Berlin. We are not talking about the deepest countryside. So um, I, I don't know what's try, going on. Try to make a phone call by mobile in Munich. It's funny sometimes. Yeah, that could be too. <laughs> um, so I, I really don't know why. Is, uh, that is, it might be because what you said, Andreas, that companies are do or did too good in the past and it was not needed. But on the other hand, there are a lot of startups or smaller companies um, where the business models are based on digitalization and uh, they definitely need it. And um, I see it as a challenge that um, companies would um, move to other countries where the infrastructure is way better and again, where is less regulation bringing it back to my topic, plus um, and venture capital. And again, I would like to bring an, up another example when it comes to immigration, because that's why I was so happy when you um, said that. Recently, um, I hired an employee from Nigeria, and it was clearly an in-office job, which is something we usually don't have, but in this case, it was an in-office job, and he said, okay, I relocate. And then he told us getting an appointment at the German embassy in Nigeria will take uh, until January 21, 2021. If he would have applied for the appointment in October, which he didn't. So yeah, I really strongly support your point. Judith, it's a good aspect what you have uh, said that the um cultured what's taking place more and more to um, combine traditional family driven companies with startups they're buying some startups or they're working together or they're creating projects to learn from them and um, that's that's a good move to get some speed 
in the mindset for digitization. And uh, what, what we are realizing also the, the Alpha Circle, it's a um, very huge network of family business, uh, that this is a new move to combine startup experience and to learn from them regarding the execution and not only the execution technical wise because the digitization should be not the, um, it can be the way but not the aim. You have to, to have a look on what's the result and you fulfill your vision. But startups are very helpful to um, increase openness. <laughs> Uh, while we're talking about uh, quality, uh, qualified staff, um, I think digitalization, and, and you've seen that in, in, in any newspaper, if, if we're talking about the changes, we will lose a lot of jobs. Because uh, with digitalization, artificial intelligence, whatever, they will be simply replaced. But on the other hand, we need digital natives who can support that change. And I think that's a fundamental uh, role for the politicians um, in, in every country, uh, but also uh, for the enterprises <coughs> to make that change happen. To get the qualified people on one side, and not only from Nigeria, but please in country as well, don't forget that. Um, and uh, in addition, uh, take care about the jobs who will no be longer available. Um, uh, look at uh, banks and insurance companies, look at uh, automotive industry. They are cutting jobs in thousands and ten thousands. And we need to find alternatives for these people. And the alternatives are in digital jobs. Do we have best practices we can learn from and what can we learn from them? Um, I mean, there's one advantage in Germany because people are getting older and older, so there are less uh, uh, people available for the job market, which solves on one side a little bit the problem, uh, talking about demography, but that's only part of the solution because that's an outside uh, influence. Um, and uh, if we don't educate in-house uh, the young people will be in big trouble because we simply don't have the qualified staff in country. And um, the solution to talking about immigrants, whether it's Nigeria or India or whatever, solves that problem only partially. So th there must be an in-country solution, which is not only applicable for Germany, but for, for every country, because we need these digital natives everywhere. And uh, this is the reason why we are, one of our demands is this t topic of uh, education and long, uh, long life learning. We need this uh, to, to handle the problem. Uh, two weeks ago, I uh, was at an event from, or I attended an event from Alpha Circle, and two men were standing beside me from a relative well known head hunter company. and they have a special unit to identify persons with skill for digitization. That's also an interesting development because there are new new jobs and that's, yeah, there also uh, is a need for, for new or spe specific skills, new skills for the younger generation, but uh, they are looking for elder people, for implementation, creating visions, and it's not just uh, this chief digital officer, there are a lot of other roles meanwhile. So maybe um, it's the time that I can ask uh, in the um, auditorium what uh, maybe you want to ask to our panelists here on stage. I mean, you've got here some uh, different perspectives and uh, maybe that's a good idea and a good possibility right now uh, to to get your perspective communicated here. Is there, are there questions? In the moment, I can't see anyone who's uh, asking. So maybe from my side again, um, we're talking about all these things quite a long time. It's not new, actually. What's wrong? Um, uh, what has uh, maybe politics to do 
on the um, yeah on the regional level, on the local level, on the on the federal level, or on the European level to change this situation. We are talking here about now I don't know um, ten years. I think one of the problems is that a lot of decision makers, as mentioned earlier, mm. whether they are politicians or uh, decision makers in in companies, they don't. They are not aware. I don't want to say they, they don't understand that they are not aware of the importance of digitalization, as Andreas mentioned. So, and if you are not aware of that, you have no motivation to change it. But Sabina, Sabina just introduced in the beginning Gaia X, and we just listened to the Ministry of, uh, of the Federal Minister of uh, Economic that uh, he has, uh, especially in this area of data center, um, now an idea to get with Siemens together. He, he, Joe Kaiser said, "Let's get it done." Um, that we want to to have some digital sovereign infrastructure in Germany. Is that the right approach? This is part of the solution, but I've mentioned the problems we have. Uh, the billing permission takes much too long, and we cannot wait uh, nine months before we, uh, we can even break ground. Uh, power cost is far too high, which means a lot of data centers uh, are moving out of Germany and going to Scandinavia or somewhere else, even France or the Netherlands, is much more attractive from a cost point of view. Um, and uh, this is, uh, by the way, not only true for hyperscalers, also our big automotive companies place their data centers in Germany for what is mandatory to be in Germany, but the high performance computing stuff, which is not latency driven, they put outside because of cost reasons. So they save, save millions and tens of millions by putting them out. And if you don't change that, if you support the um, Uh, old economy industry by reducing the power cost for them, but not for data centers, uh, the result is obvious. Andreas? I think we have to see how, how politics uh, works. And uh, so see what, what's happening on, uh, on the street on every Friday, yeah? Friday's future, young people standing up and, uh, and uh, acting for better ecology. And uh, what's happened with the economy? No one goes on the street. No one is allowed for uh, digitalization. We are talking here with a few people, and uh, the politicians like to be uh, re-elected, and uh, therefore they're looking for the next topic. What's on on the on the what's happening on the street? What's in the heads of the people down the, around there? And digitalization is not in the mindsets of the of the people and therefore it's not in the of the in the mindset of the of the politicians and uh, i think we have to be louder and uh, we have to yeah to to uh, go for uh, becoming the awareness uh, this topic needs and this is a um, a goal this is an aim we ha we all have to focus and we have to, uh, all have to work as the mittelstand as all, at all Uh, never mind which uh, organization we have to stand together and uh, try have to yeah uh, have to act yeah, i can totally support that um as, as bella said um supporting the old um, economy is a kind of a pattern um, which I see um, whereas the intent is always good and we already have um, plans for years to bring up a digitalization then again we are driving back because we have to support the old economy and as Andreas mentioned um, of course politicians would like to get re-elected which makes sense but um, by always um, pushing the old economy there is no innovation at all there is again no attraction for young people which comes to education and um, hiring good stuff and also considering climate change and all that kind of stuff and what attracts younger people um, you're getting offered a car a company car as a bonus thing uh, in a company that is still something which is offered does it attract a young person um, going into the job I don't think so um, so I guess the whole mindset must change and it must stop that um, the old economy is just supported whereas innovation is uh, falling down. Once more maybe the question, do, do we have other countries where we can learn from? Because you, you, we, we are focused here uh, on a German discussion and uh, typical culture uh, of, of uh, German economy is there maybe... 
Well, when it comes to regulation or non-regulation, I guess it's still the United States, which uh, first allow business models to grow and then see how it's going and the, uh, to regulate the industry by themselves. It's more self-regulation approach. I do not agree when it comes to security and privacy stuff, but when it comes to stay out of business and innovation, then that's a co uh, country I would suggest. And uh, I mean, b besides the funny things Donald Trump is doing, uh, I, I fully agree with what Judy said, uh, that uh, the US is supporting um, not only the old economy, but for sure the new economy. There's a lot of venture capital. Um, it's allowed to fail, which is not easy in Germany if you fail once uh, to get a second chance. In uh, in the US, it's, it's a kind of yeah, motivation. If you fail once, you try it a second time and a third time, just do it. And uh, if, if, if you have 10 startups or 20 startups and only one will be a, a, a unicorn, then that's fine. And we ha don't have that. Um, I, I would say even in, in, in most of Europe, we don't have that philosophy. And this is missing. That support of innovative ideas and just do it, just try it, and then let's see what happens. It can end with a question to you, maybe. <laughs> the, um, there is an, the opinion that, the, for instance, the digital agenda from the Bundesregierung is too superficial and uh, the, a deep dive is missing to precise recommendations, projects to execute this. And um, I've talked to the Competence Centrum 4.0. There are some in Germany, that's a good move. And uh, now what I like the idea to create, the CDU has uh, published this one ministry for digitization, central one, and not here one, there one, they have to cooperate. And so a uh, question for you, Alexander, <laughs> what's the eco attitude regarding this? Actually, we have the inventor of the digital minister here in the room, Manuel Höferlin. Um, he, in the last uh, coalition uh, discussions, he uh, offered or he showed a concept uh, which we strongly support as an association because we also believe, and Oliver <coughs> Zümer is sitting here and he just uh, talked to the Handelsblatt about uh, the digital ministerium, that we need something like that. We need a new approach in uh, the politic uh, decision-making process processes because it's not just a person, it's not just a name, it's a, it's a new perspective of how to get things done uh, by politics. But from my point of view, we don't need only, how is it called in English, Feigenblatt minister, uh, which is the... <laughs> sorry, but uh, so we need, we need digital ministers that would really try to bring the digitalization in front and not only uh, going around and uh, presenting some uh, flying taxis. So now that we opened the discussion in this uh, broad way, maybe another chance for you to get involved into the discussion. Are there now any questions you want to ask? Now the head raises up, so please just your name maybe and the question. Uh, oh, it is working. Kayleen, CEO of Black Knight. Um, we're a hosting company in Ireland. Um, this is very much kind of German focused, but I think some of the things you're talking about uh, would also be similar in, in Ireland. I mean, there's things like the tax regime. So for example, if, if I were to sell my company, I'd probably end up losing most of what I, was, most of what I got on taxes, which is a problem. Um, advocating to follow the American model I can understand why you might say that, but that opens up a very, very nasty side effect. The Americans don't care about, about the environment, whereas I think the rest of us, those of us in Europe, we do. I mean, the, the ability to innovate is great, but that has to come at a cost. I mean, you cannot uh, simply allow people to build um, data centers and everything which, which without taking into consideration the environmental impact. Um, like with, I mean, I own a data center, so I'm completely aware of that, but I mean, the, the kind of argument around 
government is supporting old industry, they should help more with data centers is, it can be a little, it is, it's a bit more nuanced than that. Because I mean, if you take the average data center, it doesn't create hundreds and hundreds of jobs. Now the companies that are using the data centers might, but not always. So I mean, the, that kind of argument has, you have to be quite careful how you frame it. I mean, I don't disagree with it up to a point, but I think if you're going to go hell for leather on something, then you should be looking more at things like, you know, broadband infrastructure. I mean, the idea that a, that a city like Berlin, you can't get better than five megabits is laughable. I thought Ireland was bad. Um, <laughs> I mean, we, we now have the farcical situation where you can get gigabit ethernet if you live in the middle of nowhere, but you can't get faster than about 80 megabits if you live in the middle of a large town, because the, the middle of nowhere has the new fiber, the, the town has the older, older infrastructure, and they're not going to upgrade it. But I think you know, the, some, of, some of the concerns you're raising, yeah, I think they're valid, but I would be careful when you start talking about data centers specifically just simply because they don't deliver the number of jobs. I think you need to look at it more in terms of the digital economy as a whole and how that can empower empower communities. Because realistically if you're not if you don't do that, you go down, take this through to its logical conclusion, you end up in a situation where a lot of people end up potentially marginalized because you have that kind of knowledge gap. Now I'm an advocate for the digital economy, don't get me wrong. But I just think it's more to do with how you frame the argument rather than the argument itself. Yeah, I partially agree with what you said. And uh, yes, for sure, we take uh, care about the environment and sustainability. So uh, if, if you're talking about new designed data centers, they have a PUE of 1.2, 1.3, which means only 25% uh, of the whole energy uh, is used for the data center and the remaining is used for the service and the IT infrastructure. And um, uh, if we are talking about uh, the, the bigger data centers, then they're usually much more efficient. Um, so, and, and uh, I was my company, I, I have a project that we want to provide the heat to um, uh, 1,200 apartments just on the other side of the street. So we really care about sustainability. <clears throat> what, you said, what you said about the um, uh, number of staff in data centers, I completely disagree. First of all, we, we do need uh, digital infrastructures, and data centers are part of that. Um, and th there's an increasing amount of data um, the, the, uh, the amount of data is doubling every 18 to 24 months. We are talking about CETA bytes of data, w which is the one with uh, 21 zeros. And this is doubling every 18 to 24 months. So we need more capacity, more data centers, more broadband. And you're right that the directly employed uh, uh, number of persons in a data center is fairly small. But if you talk about the indirect, about the customers into that data center. Uh, we, we did an analysis that um, in Germany, more than 200,000 people are working in data center industry, which is uh, already 25% of what is working in the automotive industry. Our number is increasing, while the number of employees in the automotive industry in Germany is decreasing. And that's a tendency, and therefore I, I disagree with your point that only a few people are uh, working in a data center if you take the whole, there are a lot of people working in and for data centers. Actually, we're talking about an ecosystem. We just published a study where we um, put the data center inside, and we just had a look how it's connected to the ecosystem around. And if you collect this, then you come to a different perspective. But I completely be on your side, the data center itself. It's not the one uh, who has the, the big impact. But the ecosystem around uh, will do so. And as we learned, uh, especially small, medium-sized uh, enterprises are, are really looking for some partner of trust around them. So some more questions to raise. Otherwise, the panelists will be um, for questions around. And we yeah, would like to say thank you for your attention. I would like to say thank you for your input. And uh, yeah, have a nice day. And enjoy the Internet Governance Forum today in Berlin. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you very much.
Um, hello, everyone. Uh, we'll be starting in a couple of minutes. Uh, meanwhile, could I request those of you at the back to please come up front? Um, I don't think we're going to be that large a group, so it'll really help if you would just come up front and take some of the seats in the front. Thank you. So we'll start. Welcome, everybody, to this panel. My name is Sarah Ganter. I work for Friedrich Ebert Foundation, and I'm responsible for the work on global digital economy. And it is my honor and pleasure um, to be moderating this wonderful panel today on equity, equity and social justice in a digital world. The panel was organized by the JustNet Coalition and includes the launch of the brand new Digital Justice Manifesto, which is here on the table. The Digital Justice Manifesto of the JustNet Coalition is a call to take back digital power. In the introdu introduction, it states that the digital reshapes our social relationships and power structures so fundamentally that societies data and intelligence governance requires a new digital social contract. The manifesto formulates 16 key principles on data governance and digital intelligence. I would like to first introduce our panelists and then ask Parminda Singh to come up and say a few more words on the JustNet Coalition's work and also on the manifesto. Uh, Parminda, we are, should I first introduce the panel or you? 
Okay, okay, good. So to my left, uh, there's Elvan Korkmaz. Elvan is a, an economist and she's member of the German parliament and their member of the Digital Agenda Committee and of the Transport and Digital Infrastructure Committee. <laughs> she has been deputy chairwoman of the Social Democratic Party of North Rhine Westphalia and uh, she says that in order to make technological innovations serve the common good, we need to adapt our competition law and data law. She calls for companies to sh sharing their data, a strong public infrastructure for the digital age, and more transparency in the data jungle. Welcome, Elban. Further to my left, there's Anita Gurumoti. 